All right, welcome everyone to this reading. As you can see from the title, today we're going to be exploring new love. Totally new. Someone who's totally new, not someone you've wasted a lot of time with, either in a relationship or just emotional, mental energy. This is going to be new. New, new, new. That's all we're looking about. That's all we're looking at today. So we've got three reading options here. No old connections allowed in this particular reading. From left to right, with number one, we have pleasure. Number two, integrity. Number three, acceptance. So whenever you have chosen your reading, of course, just look to the timestamps in the description box below, and I'll see you there. All right, welcome to everybody who chose reading number one. So your initial card that you chose is pleasure. And it says, I give myself permission to feel pleasure, and I let that pleasure rush into my life in a decadent display of over-the-top abundance. Then I realize that pleasure has been waiting at my door for a long time. It's just that pleasure doesn't knock on doors because loud, noise, loud noises aren't super pleasant. So yeah, I feel like this is saying that the enjoyable uh, romance that you've been waiting for is also waiting for you. So let's learn more about this person. Okay, we have Justice, the Eight of Pentacles, Knight of Pentacles. I'm just going to read in the upright today. It's my prerogative. Have lots of Pentacles here. Okay, and then the Death card and Five of Pentacles. Hmm, I don't know. There's something here about money for sure. And with justice and the death, that can also be something about an inheritance. Maybe this is someone who has some sort of substantial money from an inheritance. That's mostly what I'm getting here in terms of who they are. I do feel like this is someone who is a hard worker. Like even if they've inherited some sort of uh, money, they also still work hard. So this isn't someone who's like got some sort of silver spoon in their mouth and they're lazy. You know, the Knight of Pentacles is also is always someone who's very hard working. Five of Pentacles shows me as well that they still have struggled, whether it was financially or not. They've been through some sort of significant struggles in their life and they've always persevered. But... Yeah, I feel like this is someone who always tries to do the right thing. Um, but they've struggled a lot. It could be they've struggled with relationships or something. I don't know. Let's see what else comes up here. We get Vase, Secret Admirer. So now what we talked about, and this is new energy, not someone who you've wasted emotional energy or mental energy on. But they may still know you. You know, but, you know, it's it's going to be new to you because you haven't explored this or considered this person, perhaps, or you're just not aware. So, and that kind of, is kind of what I, the energy that I got here as well. Um, pleasure has been waiting at my door for a long time. So this might be someone who's had feelings for you for a long time, but you're just oblivious to it. So bear with me, you know, when we talk about new. I don't want anyone to get upset here. Although if you do, I, I mean, that's, I guess that's your prerogative. You can be upset if you want to be, but yeah, it could just, like I said, this, you're not, you are not emotionally revisiting this because I don't think that you've ever maybe thought of this person in this way, but they are secretly admiring you. And maybe that's what this struggle is about. They've struggled because of that, because they've had these long standing feelings for you that they've been keeping secret. Beryl, you feel something is lacking in your life, perhaps love, money, or goals. Yeah, I feel like this is a very goal-oriented person, maybe because they feel like they haven't either been successful with you or successful just in their love life in general. This might be the type of person who puts more of their energy into work, money, career, because they feel like that's an area where at least they can make more obvious progress. So it may not be someone who handles emotional situations well but I do feel like they have deep running emotions because to me that's the death card always indicates that it's like it's that Scorpio energy of someone who is very emotional but um, they they may just prefer to kind of like focus on the material world and that makes them feel a little bit more whole 
Dragon, beware of self-delusion. Yeah, I think this person gets in their own way a lot. And I think that they have felt this way about you, that maybe they're deluded to even feel that they have a chance with you. So, yeah, they doubt themselves a lot. We get the month of November. So that might be a significant month where something happens between the two of you. And we have whale. Great worry over nothing. Yeah. This person, maybe if they did express their feelings. One of my nails is trying to come off. That's fun. Um, maybe if they did express their feelings, uh, it actually would be okay. You know? But, but they haven't done that because they have all this worry. Maybe that they're not good enough. Let's get some more of a description of them. Cerebral. So very intelligent person. Libra. Again, Libra is a, an air sign, so the, this is very, um, you know, mental energy here. The Lib Libra just shows me this person is also very polite. They are try to be, you know, conscientious toward other people and kind. They are outgoing. I didn't get that feel for this person up to this point, but it could be that they are very much a people person. A bit of a rebellious energy with this person. Lazy. Yeah, I didn't get that either. So it could be someone who works hard so that they can play hard. You know, they work hard so that they have the opportunity to be lazy. I do think that they're a hard worker, but maybe when they're not working, they're just especially lazy. It's either like all or nothing. And then we have Scorpio, which doesn't mean that they have to be a sun sign Scorpio. But they do have that kind of like Scorpio energy with in them, which is, you know, this is someone who prefers to really get to the heart of who another person is. If they, if they like someone, they really want to get deep down into who is this person really beyond the facades, beyond the BS and all of that. You know, I really want to truly get to know who you are. What have you been through in life? What have your struggles been? That's what this, that's who this type of person is. So, and then our final card here is, oh, the hero or heroine. Passion for a journey of personal empowerment. So I feel like this is someone who's really actively always trying to improve themselves. Um, because they really, they just want to achieve something meaningful with their life. They don't want their life to be wasted. We have the king of swords coming up at the bottom of the deck. So again, very intelligent, cerebral, like we said. But maybe not, you know, they have these deep emotions, but I feel like they're just not always so comfortable with them. What guidance do you have to the viewer of number one? What guidance do you have? Okay, we have King of Swords reverse. So I feel like part, partly they're saying, you know, maybe the reason you haven't really considered this person before is that they come across sometimes as someone who is a little bit of an asshole. Like maybe it feels like this person is always pushing their beliefs or um, stating their opinions about things in a way that is sort of off-putting to you. They feel like your guides would still want you to give this person a chance uh, we have, yeah, the Hierophant reversed. Yeah, this is someone who has very firm and established beliefs, spiritual, philosophical, something like that. But it's like the way that they express it doesn't come across very well to you. Um, what do your guides have to say about that? Yeah, it's sort of like give this person a chance. Like if you really gave them the time of day, you would kind of understand this better. That maybe this is how they sort of, maybe this is the, way that they show themselves as a sort of way of protecting themselves. Like they want to put up this front of, uh, like, I don't care what you think because this is what I think and what, I, you know, and I'm not going to change my opinion. Maybe they come across in that sort of harsh way. But like, if you actually got to know them, they're much warmer, very earthy energy here. I think even this person... <laughs> gets frustrated with themselves sometimes you know they they're like nobody really sees who i really am because i come across this way but they're hopeful i feel like this person is hopeful that that you all can get to know each other better um and in terms of guidance you know like 
this person is going to take it slow with you because they do have all this very earthy energy, which is slow moving, but it's slow and steady. It's um, because this is a very serious person. When they decide on something, it's um, they don't make decisions um, quickly. You know, when they make a decision, the decision is made. They're very decisive. So what's the advice to the viewer here? Don't wait around, you know, because this is a slow-moving energy, and they're saying don't wait around. You know, at this point, it sounds like you haven't really considered this person too much anyway. Uh, but don't allow yourself to get in that mentality of, oh, no, they have feelings, so now I'm going to start being obsessive and waiting around and waiting for something to happen. Your guides are saying that's not in your best interest. Uh, don't wait around. Don't necessarily even expect something to happen. Just continue to be yourself. But I feel feel like you all are a good match. We have the King of Swords and the Queen of Swords. Definitely you're very intellectually compatible. Um, okay. Yeah, don't reach out to this person just because you're like, oh, this sounds like such and such. Maybe I should reach out to them. Death again. Yeah, don't don't try to make something happen here emotionally. Because that would probably backfire. What is likely to happen, though? So this is new energy coming in, but what's likely to happen? There will be communication. So this person will communicate to you. Oh my, and it will be very happy. Well, there you go. I mean, yeah, you don't have to just, you don't have to worry about it. Again, well, it goes back to this, you know. Pleasure doesn't knock on doors because loud noises aren't ple aren't pleasant. Yeah, this person will approach you in a way that's very pleasant and harmonious. Maybe a little flirty or something with the Eight of Wands. Um, but they, they're, they'll be very polite about it and very sort of uh, practical about it. So, yeah, just let it, you know... Don't worry about it. Allow this person to come forward towards you. And it's going to make you very happy when, when this communication um, becomes more rapid between the two of you. Well, that was very nice. Uh, I, th I hope that you all liked this reading. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you later. Bye-bye. All right, welcome to everyone who chose reading number two. Your stack starts with the word integrity. So we'll just start out with reading that. It says, I align with the center of myself, a glowing core of personal integrity. Emanating from this core is the knowledge that I never have to compromise who I am or what I want for anybody. I can live a life that doesn't include settling unless I want to settle, in which case settling would be my idea of perfection and would cease to be considered settling. Uh, paradox is hurt. Home, then it says up here, home is where the heart is. So I feel like this is, I feel like you guys are learning how to be at home with yourselves. And also, if you do relate to this part of it, you know, unless I want to settle, in which case settling would be my idea of perfection. I really hope that that is not your idea of perfection, although I can recognize in myself that a lot of times I, I have also felt like, oh, settling would be my idea of per perfection. Maybe I didn't necessarily see it as settling exactly, but I was settling uh, for something that I thought would be perfect. And I think it's good for all of us to just try to have that kind of self awareness of how much of ourselves we're giving away just in order to get back some sort of, you know, validation in terms of a romantic partnership. So a little speech that you didn't ask for, but all right, I'm just going to read these tarot cards upright. We have the page of pentacles, the nine of pentacles. This is interesting because number one also had so many pentacles cards showing up. Um, three of Pentacles, the Fool, and the Three of Cups. So who is this new person that's coming in? I think this is someone who does really actually respect your integrity. And so this makes sense to me. Uh, this is someone who um, understands that you are your own person. 
and they're willing to work with you on that. This is someone who can give you your freedom in life. Um, they don't want you to have to feel like you're obligated to self-sacrifice for them. The Three of Pentacles is showing like collaboration, you know, like you have important things that you're working on that you're trying to achieve here. Um, goals that you're going after, you know, the Page of Pentacles is like slow and steady wins the race, but I have aspirations. The Nine of Pentacles is someone who is at home with themselves and has achieved quite a bit and wants to enjoy that. I feel like what the, the feeling I'm getting from these three cards is that both of you are kind of like this. You have these important aspirations that are meaningful to you. And with the Three of Pentacles, the two of you can come together as individuals with your own selves and your own lives. And then together, the, t the two of you could create a new life together. So it's going to be someone who you, you have, this new person who's going to come in is going to be someone who you have that kind of a vibe with. We also have the Fool and the Three of Cups. So this might be telling us a little bit about how things get started with the two of you. That it will feel very fresh and new just from the beginning. You know, like this will seem different from what you've had bef experienced before and in a very, very good way. With the Three of Cups, you might meet in some sort of social setting or you could meet each other through mutual friends or family or just people that you know in common. You might also like some of the same people or like, you know what I mean, like say you have the same friends. Um, you, you, know, you might enjoy the same types of people. I hope that makes sense. But yeah, so you could also, you could build a life together with this person, but you could also socialize together in like a friend group and really have a good time. You know, sometimes you can date someone and you don't like their friends or they don't like your friends. I feel like this is not that type of situation. Um, yeah, let's see what else we've got coming up here. We get Kane. Pay attention to your health. Okay, we'll ask more about that. I don't know what that's trying to say, really. Candle, you will be shown the way. Okay, full card and you will be shown the way. Now, this makes perfect sense to me because the full card is about trusting the path. You know, like normally we have the full about to step off of the cliff. But, you know, just trusting that the future will be rewarding. And so it's worth going ahead and taking the risks and venturing into the future, which is always unknown. So this is about venturing into the unknown and trusting. Um, you know, it's like there's a Martin Luther King Jr. quote that's something like this. Like, you don't have to be able to see the entire staircase in order to take those first steps. You'll have a feeling... In getting to know this person and some, you know, like like I said, maybe through other people or whatever, you're going to have a feeling from the outset that there is some sort of potential here and that you like this person. And I think you'll be excited rather than nervous and so worried, which is so nice, you know. You'll just be like, oh, I kind of trust that if I continue to get to know this person and develop this, that there's something really good here. There's something really positive for me. Nest, an emotionally secure, loving family is important to you. And yeah, I feel like the two of you have shared values. You know, part of why there's good, I feel like, you know, there's going to be good stability here with you two because you have shared values. You want the same things out of life. And that's very important. You know, feelings, having feelings for someone is only one part of the equation. If you don't want, if you don't have the same vision for what your future to be you know like if one person wants kids and the other one doesn't or something like that one person wants to live in one country and one person wants to live in another country whatever it is there are lots of just practical issues like that that can ruin things no matter what your emotions for each other are but in this case the emotions and your life plans and your values match up beautifully which means you can co-create a shared life together. We get the month of January. So it could be that you meet this person in January. And I want to go back to this cane card. What is this saying about health issues? It's coming up under the Three of Cups, which can be about overindulgence. Uh, but I'm not sure what this means in terms of you meeting a new person. So let's just ask. 
What's this trying to tell? Okay. Lovers reversed, Knight of Cups reversed. Hmm. Maybe it's just saying, you know, I got the sense that you're going to trust and you're not going to be anxious for the most part. But for some of you who maybe it's your natural tendency to get emotionally overwrought when you meet someone new that you like, it might just be a little bit of a caution about paying attention to your emotional and mental health. Like, this is going to be exciting. You're definitely going to like this person right away and see the potential here. But there could be a danger in maybe, um, uh, what, is, what is the word I'm trying to think of? Could be like, you know, just emotionally obsessing about it or something. Um, you know, you want to, these cards are in reverse. If they were upright, this would be very positive. You, you might be sort of like worried about, do they feel the same way? Things like that. Do they feel the same way? Will we be happy? I mean, the thing is, with the full card here, we we can never know for sure what's going to happen 10 years from now, 5 years from now, even a week from now. Like, tomorrow, we don't know. We don't know what's going to happen. And so, if you allow that to upset you emotionally, the fact that you don't know if it's going to work out, then you'll never begin the journey with this person, which it looks like there's a lot of potential here. So... I feel like they're just saying, you know, like if you need to take it slow, that's fine. I feel like both of you would actually enjoy moving more slowly and not necessarily rushing into things because we have the three of pentacles here. But the emotions will be there from the outset. And, you know, just focus on the energy of this full card. You know, like, like I said, you don't have to see the whole staircase in order to take those first steps. You know that you like this person. They like you you might as well start taking those first steps. And as you do that, more will be revealed. You will be shown the way. So if there are some red flags that show up later on that do indicate that this probably wouldn't work out in the end, then it's okay. You know, like you would never have come to the point of knowing that if you didn't start taking those steps to begin with. So I feel like that's just a little bit of guidance from Spirit. And we have another knight here. So I feel like this is going to be someone who is very romantic. I feel like this is someone who is not afraid of showing their emotions. So that's nice. Um, family oriented. Yeah, I kind of got that too with this, the nest with the eggs in it. That it might be someone who wants to have kids. <laughs> A goody two shoes. Stubborn. Nostalgic sporty and they might have freckles or moles so just to sum it up is there any further advice we got some advice already but anything else spirit would like to say to you guys just for advice well they they're just saying don't Try to be aware of past patterns you've had when it comes to new love and how those past patterns have gotten in your way. They're, they're saying that in order for you to have a different relationship experience than what you've had in the past, you yourself also have to be different. I mean, it's good to be who you are, but but we are always evolving. And they're saying that there's something about the past patterns that you've had that requires you to evolve. Now, that doesn't mean if you've had toxic or abusive experiences that you caused that. It's just saying that you have to be more aware now so that you don't allow those types of situations to happen again. I don't think that this person is toxic, but um, there might be other things that you're worried about repeating. You know, I feel there's definitely, to me, a, a fear of rejection here that will maybe, maybe we'll start seeing each other and then they'll break up with me or reject me or something. I mean, that's always a possibility, right? Um, but it can also become a self-fulfilling prophecy 
if there's not something emotional that you are willing to um, acknowledge and address within yourself. Three of Cups coming up again. Yeah. <sighs> again, this could go back to like there's some sort of emotional overindulgence. You might be someone who looks way beneath the surface of what's happening emotionally. Like you're really prying into the other person's psyche to understand them. It's almost like there's a little bit of paranoia here with you guys. But... It's almost like you get drunk on that. Some of you could be strong empaths, and so you're just naturally very aware of other people's emotional undercurrents, but you also really like diving into them and exploring them. But at the same time, it starts to make you paranoid that, um, you know, like you might start thinking you see certain things in that person's emotional depth that aren't really there. Because, yeah, there's, there is a lot of, whoever this person is, um, this is someone who is very loving, you know. I feel like there's going to be a very loving person who you have shared values with coming into your life. And this is definitely something that I feel like Spirit is encouraging you to explore. Anything else? Yeah, I definitely feel like you guys are like emotional givers. And I think your guides are just saying like, this person is willing to be emotionally giving to you. You don't have to give to get with this person. So don't do that. <laughs> um, I'm not saying not to be giving, but don't give in order to get. Allow this person to show you that they are willing to love you for who you are. That you don't have to earn that love. You don't have to earn their kindness. This person is going to see in you that you deserve it. You don't have to kind of go out of your way and deplete yourself. Because the Ace of Cups can also be about that. Uh, Ace of Cups reverse. Like turning your own cup upside down in order to please someone else or get someone to like you. That will not be necessary with this person. Yeah, it's a lot for you guys about overcoming, like, both emotional, symbolized by the water, and mental blockages that have kind of, like, led you to have a sort of limited belief system as it relates to your romantic life. You know, if this woman, you know, if she... If she wasn't allowing herself to feel so limited, she would see that it would be easy to pull her arms out of this and to pull this off of her forehead and to just walk away. You know, these there's plenty of room to walk around these swords. Um, she might, might feel like there are some things that could hurt her here, but she has way more control over the situation than what she thinks. And I feel like that's really what your guides want you to be reminded of as well, that you have way more control over this situation than what you think. If it starts to feel like it's not good based on your experience, you know, walking up those stairs together with this person, then you can change your mind. You're not stuck in anything. You can always choose to say, well, I thought this was something that would be good for me, but now I'm not so sure. You're, it's okay for you to change your mind. Um, you're allowed to do that. All right, so I hope that that was helpful. Um, thanks so much for watching, guys, and I'll see you later. Bye-bye. Welcome to everybody who chose reading number three, which is acceptance. I'm going to light some Palo Santo as I read this card. It says, when I get to know new people, and that's what we're, that's what we're talking about, so how appropriate. When I get to know new people, I accept their actual traits rather than the ones I project onto them. The same goes for not new people I already know. Acceptance is the delicate art that reminds us everyone is their own unique self and we can't expect them to ever be anything but. Man, how do those snowflakes do it? So I guess snowflakes ex ex not only are unique, but they accept each other's uniqueness according to this card.
Will this Palo Santo ever light? Can I accept this Palo Santo if it doesn't ever light? Okay, there we go. At least it's giving us some smoke. All right. Okay, so I think this is a clue that this new person that you're going to meet or that's going to come into your life is going to be someone that at first, maybe the first impression is not the best. And so it's just a, a word of caution to kind of give people a chance beyond that first impression. Let's see more about this new person. We have the Nine of Wands, Page of Cups, Judgment. Yeah, you might be making some judgments. We have, oh, the sun and the world. Yeah. Interesting. So just reading this is a little bit of a story. What I get here is that you're kind of clearing away a lot of the dead stuff from your life or clearing away a lot of stuff in your life that no longer serves you, getting rid of the old stuff. To me, the Nine of Wands is also about old patterns. I think you're starting to realize what it is that you need to eliminate from your life so that you don't keep repeating those unwanted patterns. And then with the Page of Cups here, especially how it's portrayed in this card, I feel like you're just learning to love yourself more, that you don't have to keep uh, putting up with certain people and situations that don't serve you. And instead, you can start just loving yourself and understanding that you're worth more. And then we have the Judgment card. You're really going through some sort of like leveling up process in your life. And I feel like your guides are saying that is what is bringing this new person into your life. And this is going to be someone who is going to bring you a lot of happiness with the sun and the world card. The sun is about joy, bliss, happiness, merriment, warmth, enjoyment, uh, being appreciated. And the world card is just the... It's like the completion of a cycle, a very happy completion of a cycle where you're finally being fulfilled in what area whatever area of life it is that you're looking at. In this case, your romantic life. So yeah, there is a really good catch coming into your life. Let's learn more about them. Okay, it says, Boot, increase your efforts if you want to achieve your goals. I think that goes back to what we were <laughs> talking about over here. There are certain things you're going to have to boot out of your life so that you can do this, continue in this leveling up pre process that you're probably already in. Uh, but you're really leveling up. So, you know, give it all you've got. Get as far as you can. Um, discord among friends or family. Maybe some of what you're getting rid of is this type of energy where there's people who are causing discord in your life and you may have been putting up for, with it too for uh, putting up with it for too long. Grapes. Time to go out and have fun. Yeah. You're focusing more on yourself and your own needs. And instead of focusing on all of these other people who are causing you strife and conflict, you're saying, nope, I'm here to enjoy life. I deserve to enjoy life. You can hit the road, Jack. I've got other things to do with my life than to, to spend it worrying about all of this chaos and conflict that you're bringing into it. So that's very positive. Happiness. Yes, you are becoming a happier person. And that uh, newness or that new level of happiness that you're moving into is bringing you this wonderful new love experience. Pineapple. We have reconciliation. Now we're talking about a new person. Not uh, So we'll ask more about this. Uh, you know, in the first reading, we had someone come up who was someone that the person already knew. But it's not someone that they had emotionally invested in yet so it was still new in terms of romantic emotions for them but reconciliation makes me think about someone from the past so I need to ask more about what this means because that's not what this reading is about and then we have the month of December so maybe you could meet this person in the month of December what is this reconciliation card trying to say
This could be just more about reconciling with yourself or like coming to a reconciliation with yourself of like just knowing that you do deserve this happy ending. Yeah, because I feel like with the Empress reversed and the High Priestess reversed and the King of Swords reversed, maybe you've maybe you've had experiences where other people just treated you very harshly and it led you to believe that you weren't worthy of this level of happiness. So you have to reconcile that within yourself that you are not what other people have led you to believe about yourself. You are worthy of attracting someone who allows you to experience love and, and abundance. Um, the high priestess reverse to me can indicate someone who's kind of, your intuition might be blocked by your fear. Here, in this case, a fear of not being good enough. Uh, fears that are built upon kind of negative things that people have said to you in the past, maybe even past romantic partners, ideas that romantic partners have planted in your head in the past. Some of you might have experienced someone who, because the Empress Reverse can be portrayed as like a, a loose woman. And here with the King of Swords Reverse, you may have had a partner in the past who was always accusing you of cheating and things like that. Or just saying things uh, that made you feel very worthless about your femininity or your sexuality. And you're learning to let go of that those toxic mindsets that this person kind of planted into, into your psyche. And so that's very positive. You have been able to sort of like be hospitable with yourself. Because the pineapple is a symbol of hospitality. You're... You're willing, I think, um, like I said, to to reconcile these differences. Like this person has this opinion of you, but their opinion of you is not necessarily the truth of who you are. So uh, let's learn more about who this person. This is someone who's not afraid to cry. And you may have been with people before who were afraid to cry because the King of Swords Reverse is definitely someone who is uh, toxically... Uh, embarrassed or ashamed of their emotions. So this new person coming in is going to be very different from that. Well, this person might have low self-esteem. <laughs> I typoed that. But um, they could be younger than you. Oh, no. Jealous and possessive. Uh-oh. That's what we're trying to avoid. Okay. Responsible and good-looking. Hmm. So reconciliation. Maybe, I mean, you know, it's human nature to be jealous and possessive, but there are levels of it, right? Maybe you're, oh my gosh. You know, this first card was about first impressions. Your first impression might be that this person reminds you initially of this toxic person from the past who was jealous and possessive in a very toxic way. So you might pick up on a little bit of jealousy to begin with this person and you might sort of jump to conclusions like, well, this is going to be this toxic kind of person again who's always putting me down in order to sort of like keep me in my place and own me. That might be your gut reaction. So I feel like with this reconcile... It's like trying to maybe reconcile as well what your experience has been so far with the actuality of who this person is. Because there's definitely something here about how the first, of, first impression of them is not going to be accurate. So, anything else we need to know about... I feel like this, uh, the new person coming in, maybe the way that their jealousy or possessiveness comes across is 
like maybe they could they could come across as a little bit stuck up at first because they are jealous maybe they see you interacting with other people that you've known longer than them and they that hurts their feelings because they want you to pay attention to them but they're not understanding that the only reason you're doing that is because you've just known those people longer and you're more comfortable with them and the two of you haven't established that long-term connection yet so they might come across as a little bit like that at first like like they're acting like they're too good for you, but that's their low low self-esteem reaction to feeling like you think you're too good for them. Like it's all all just about perceptions going on here. Yeah, I think that the initial meeting between the two of you is just going to be kind of confusing, but eventually, you know, if you're willing to continue to get to know them, it looks like there's a lot of pos you know, positive stuff here. We just have to get past the normal human nature stuff and, you know, um, those first impressions that are based on your past experiences with people like this King of Swords reverse type. So, yeah, just it's going to be very unclear to you at first, like, who exactly is this person? What is exactly is going on here? So your guides just want you to know when you meet someone and it seems like this where you're like, what is going on here? Why is this person acting this way? I'm really confused. They act like they're too good for me. But at the same time, I can sort of pick up that maybe they're a little bit jealous. Then when you meet someone like that, that may w very well be the person that this reading is about. And what month did we? I think December, right? So maybe look out for the month of December to be a month where you could meet. We also have the warrior, strength, skill, discipline, and toughness of will, heroism, stoicism, and self-sacrifice in conquering the ego. I do think this is someone who wants to conquer their own ego. They, they do recognize these kind of more negative traits within themselves, and they do want to improve those things. So I think this is kind of why your guides are encouraging you to give this person a chance. This isn't someone who doesn't care and is just going to continue to be the way that they are no matter how it's affecting other people. This is someone who cares about being a better human being. But we also have stoicism here. Like this, again, with the these two cards, that might be a little bit of your first impression as well that this person is a little bit closed off. I think it's because they just have really um, important things that they want to accomplish in their life. You know, they're disciplined, they're responsible. And it's important for them to kind of be tough. You know, they might have a little bit of a tough exterior at first as well. Uh, because, But it's because they're a warrior. They feel like there are important things themselves for one thing that they want. They want to conquer their own demons, but they might want to conquer some sort of demons in the world as well. Um, let's ask for advice. What would you have to say to the viewers of number three? Any words of advice? Okay, if in the past you've had someone who judged you simply for being like friendly and outgoing, someone who tried to make you, I'm almost feeling like maybe slut shamed. Maybe in the past you've been sort of slut shamed simply for being like a friendly, likable person who attracts attention from other people because people like friendly, attractive people, right? So, you know, I feel like they're saying that unlike in the past, this is going to be quite different. It's the second time the judgment card has come up. This is going to be very different. This is a big change. Um, this person isn't going to judge you or slut shame you in the way that maybe someone else has in the past. Because I feel like they understand that. They understand that um, maybe they're also friendly. And they, they, they know that that doesn't mean that you are being like the, the, that you're some sort of cheater or that you're a, an SLUT. I don't want to say the word again, but yeah, let me ask more about the six of pentacles reversed. 
There's a sense of mutual understanding here. And it's sort of like, you know, they know that if you acted that way towards them, they would shut you off. And they're like, well, obviously the same would be in true, true and reverse. So I'm not going to treat them like that because they would shut me off. And it's what I would deserve if I did that. This is someone who, when problems arise with you, they want to make things better. They have an active interest in smoothing things over with you rather than allowing things to remain uh, uneasy or unsettled. In short, this person, I feel like, cares about your emotions. Nine of Wands is coming up all over this video today, not just in this reading. I, th I just think that you guys have had a lot of difficult experiences in your romantic life and your guard is really, really up. And it's hard for you to trust that there's someone out there who is willing to work through issues with you. I think you've had a lot of experiences in the past where when you brought up a problem and said... Well, this hurts my feelings or, you know, this, I, this needs to change for me to be able to enjoy this relationship. You may have met in the past with a lot of resistance from these type of people who just felt like, nope, it's my way or the highway. Everything that's my perception is the reality. Your emotions are not real. Your emotions don't matter. Uh, your emotions are just a distraction from the truth. And the, my truth is the only truth. You know, this is someone who will actually sit down and have a conversation with you about emotions. Even if they're not an emotionally oriented person themselves, even if they're more of a logical person, they can still understand and be sensitive to you and say, okay, I'd, I don't want you to feel badly like that. Let's talk about it. And that's going to be a new experience for you. And I think it might even be difficult for you at first to even have those talks that you always wanted to have, but that you always had these rude people who blocked you from being able to have those relationship talks. I think it's even hard for you to have those talks at the beginning, you know, because you're like, can I trust this? Finally, someone actually wants to talk about the relationship. What? What? Someone finally cares about my emotions. That's new. <laughs> but again, yeah, like you have to be willing to go through this transformation and understand, yes, this person is deeply going to care about the depth of your emotions as much as you care about theirs. And yeah, it's new and it might be a little bit scary, but if you are willing to be open to this new experience, then it's going to just bring about, I mean, I feel like your life is going to change. We get the death card and the judgment card two times. Like these, these are all cards about your life totally changing. And at the end of those changes, we have the sun card and the world. So lots of positive change coming into your life um, due to this person's influence. So <sighs> so I hope that that was helpful. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you later. Bye-bye.